Hello and welcome. In this video, I want to show how to design and implement FIR filter in embedded systems. As an example, I'm using the accelerometer data sampled at 1 kHz using EDC. If you're interested in embedded systems control signal processing, please subscribe my channel and you can find introductory STM32 programming course on my website. Please check the description below. We start designing a fire filter from defining its parameters. In my case, I have a low pass filter, this cutoff frequency, I have this sampling weight and a filter order equal to 12. After defining all these parameters, we can use this function in MATLAB to design our filter. So if I run the code, it will provide us with the frequency response of the filter. If we are satisfied with the frequency response, we can extract all the coefficients. If not, we can further modify the parameters. Next, we need to use these coefficients when implementing the filter in embedded systems. After designing the fire filter, let's talk how we can implement it in, in embedded systems. In order to implement the fire filter, we have to use this convolution formula. H is the coefficients of the fire filter, X is an input signal, Y is an output of the filter. If uh, the order of the filter is 4, we will end up with this equation. So we take the first coefficient of the filter and we will multiply it with the last received sample. Then we take the second coefficient of the filter, then we multiply it with the sample received one iteration ago. And we continue this process until we reach the end of the filter. And as you might see, in order to implement the convolution formula, we have to store a certain amount of uh, samples on, on a buffer. For that purpose, I'm using the circular buffer. So we have this array X, and when we receive uh, uh, some new sample, we will store it uh, in this element of the, of the array, which is the value of this variable counter. So this counter points to the last received sample within the array. Then we have this for loop uh, instead of this sum operation. So we do this multiplication process within the for loop and we will add it to, to the variable y. Also, we have to extract correct sample within the array. For that purpose, I'm using this variable index. At the beginning, the value of the index is equal to counter. Uh, the, the, the value that points to the last received sample, but in every iteration within the for loop, I will decrement its value. But the value of the index might be negative, so I'm using this if statement to start from the top when its value becomes negative. After this for loop, I just increment the value of the counter, and it, it, if it reaches the end of the array, I reset its value. So this is how circular buffer operates. So every time when I receive a sample, I will store it within the buffer. And at the same time, I will increment the value of this counter. So what happens is that every time it points to the last received sample. Finally, let's implement the filter. And for that purpose, I will use the code that I wrote before. So you can check my other videos within the playlist to understand how I use ADC and the timer update interrupt. First, I want to define the length of the FIR filter. In our case, the order of the FIR filter is 12, so I will have 13 coefficients. So the, the length of the FIR filter is 13. Then we need some variables to implement the FIR filter. First, we have the coefficients of the filter. I copied these coefficients from the MATLAB script that I showed you before. Then I have a buffer where I will store the samples temporarily. So this is our circular buffer. Then I have a counter that points to the last sample data. Then finally I have the output of the FIR filter. Then we have this piece of code to implement the FIR filter. I wrote this code within the timer update interrupt. So every one millisecond, we sample some 
data through ADC. So I have this variable. Uh, when I receive, uh, first I will store it within this buffer, uh, in this element, and I reset the output of the FIA filter. Then within the for loop, I compute the output of the FIA filter. So we have FIA coefficients and the samples stored within this buffer. And uh, every time we decrement the index of the of this buffer, for that purpose I, I wrote this code. Then I increment the value of the counter. Then if I reach the end of the buffer, I reset its value. So let's check this code. So I'm using a timeline graph to visually show how a fire filter affects the, the readings. So we have the raw data, the output of the moving average filter, and the and the FIR filter that we're using. So if I run the code, and if I move the accelerometer, I have this raw data, this orange line, then we have blue, which is the output of the FIR filter, then I have the output of the moving average filter. So if I make some noise, In the raw data, we have a lot of fluctuations, but in the FIR filter, we have much less. So using this approach, you can design any other FIR filter for your need and implement it in embedded systems.